morning fellas. It's uh, still pretty early, it's probably only about 6am. I've just booted it up this hill to get to a good vantage point and I'm pretty much, right now, we're down in Victoria and I'm overlooking... Oh. Yeah, a fellow. I spotted two fellows just cruising up this hill in front of me. And just a minute ago, I glassed up two more on this face behind me. These ones look like they're heading back over into the tree line right now. Fuck, that got me pumping. I thought that was a buck for a second. Just does. You can see four does. But back to what I was saying, we're in Victoria, and this is some land that I grew up hunting as a kid for years. So, cannot wipe the smile off my face right now and it feels so nostalgic to be back here like I just I can't believe I'm standing here right now right here is where I used to sit in glass as a kid after school and I'm just amped to be here the goal is to get a fellow deer on the ground preferably a buck but honestly I'll be so stoked if we can just get a doe and also, I'm thinking I'm going to do some fox whistling today. So that's a plan. I'm going to scoot around this hill a bit and get a better, um, get in a better position to have a look at these fellow. And then I'll decide um, whether we're going to go for these two or, or the two over here. Got the jumper off, stripped off the underlayers. We're gonna go for these two over to the right just because the wind's more favourable if we go for those ones. Looks like it's gonna be a quick stalk across this gully, there's no kangaroos or anything. But those deer are quickly moving into the trees, so that's gonna be the, the issue whether we can get there in time. It's probably about, yeah, a thousand metres, but <sighs> let's boot it.
Well, unfortunately, I was about 80 yards off him and the wind just started to swirl. I could feel it just ever so lightly touching my back. And sure enough, that, that doe put her nose straight up and I don't think she fully smelt me, but she definitely, she knew something wasn't right, so. They just cruised off. They weren't too spooked. But there's no point trying to follow them into that crunchy, thick stuff. There's no chance, especially when they're on high alert. Got the heart pumping. That fox come up. Unfortunately, he came off. He he must have thought I was more over this way, because he came up the hill and he was looking up that way and he was that's where he was heading. But unfortunately, that's where my wind is going. So he he got up and he was he was kind of too close to whistle. Once they get too close, if you whistle, I don't know. It, it just gives you gives you away too easily um, so he was too close to whistle to change his direction pretty much so I was just hoping he would change direction but he didn't so he ended up pretty much coming up behind me and oh, he got my wind god that got my heart racing though I'm shaking pretty bad <laughs> trying to trying to fumble around with the camera and it's oh, good fun
Morning guys, well, I'm gonna make this quick because I'm that excited to get up this hill and start hunting. There's a bunch of stuff on this property. There's goats, fallow deer, I believe there's samba deer, and foxes. So I think the plan today, I'm gonna target goats, because I'd love to get a goat on the ground. Um, but obviously if we if we come ac across some fallow deer and samba deer, yeah, they'll, they'll jump up to first priority. It's just, I don't want to target them because I know there's not many out here. Um, so I think we've got a better chance if we go for goats. I'm only down in Victoria for about, well, I'm down here for a week, but I've, I've pretty much come down for a wedding and I've only got about two and a half days to hunt. Now, I hunted all day yesterday. Today's my second full day of hunting and then I've got a half day in the morning before I have to go to this wedding. So yeah, pressure's on, but I think we'll be able to get it done. I've made up the top of the hill now. Wind's pretty good, I hope it stays like this. Plan is to hunt along the ridge line it's from past experience growing up, the goats like to hang out up on this ridge. There's a bit of feed up here for them. And I think that's my plan to start off with. See if we can come across, I'm just gonna go real slow, just use the binos heaps. I'll show you in a second, but there's quite a lot of trees here and the goats blend in really well through all the trees. So I'm just gonna be trying picking it apart with the binos.
can still see him off in the distance. They're not that spooked. All right, well, I've just dipped around the backside of this hill. Now, I'm gonna head back up, up the hill a little bit. I reckon I might have pretty much gone completely around the goats and overtaken them. So I reckon they're up, up above me here, possibly. So I'm gonna head up there, see if I can, see if I can get back on them. Literally walked two minutes up the hill. And exactly like I thought, I found the goats right up on the top. They're in the open, it's in a really difficult spot. The, sh the sun's shining directly on me as soon as I come above this skyline. And the goats are all bedded down. A lot of them are facing towards me. <sighs> it's gonna make it tricky. But at least we got back on all them. And the wind's in our face. At the moment, the billy goat that I'm going for has pretty much separated himself from the rest of the mob. So, I might have an opportunity here. I just need the rest of the mob to sort of feed off a bit more so that I can stalk him on the billy without them spotting me. So I'm pretty much just sitting here in the sun at the moment, just getting cooked by the sun. But I'm just waiting for that, the rest of the mob to just move away. And then I'll move in.
that billy is dead right there. 17 yards from where I'm standing. <sighs> to say I was shaking is an understatement. That was a very difficult stalk. And it probably took me four hours to cover 100 meters. With so many goats around. And they're real. I didn't, I didn't think they'd be as cluey as they are, honestly. But the little nannies, like the females, my God. They were seeing me from ages away and they'd just lock on. And then, you know, you'd have to just not move for half an hour sometimes. Just before they lose interest and keep feeding or whatever. It was an absolute nightmare. But where this guy came unstuck was for whatever reason, he decided to separate himself from the rest of the mob. The rest of the mob fed off that way and he started feeding this way and it's like they kind of just accidentally separated but he didn't really mind and he just bedded down here by himself and that was his downfall because pretty much those, I let those goats, I waited ages, I let those goats feed away to the point where when I snuck in here my wind actually hit those other goats but they were far enough away that they didn't spook this one when they, because they they do a bit of a snort when they when they spook the goats like snort, um, but they were snorting so far away he couldn't hear, and that's exactly what I thought would happen. That's why I let them get so far away, and yeah, I was able to move in and put a reasonably steep quartering away shot on this guy, and he was toast. It is not very often that you get pretty much instant kills like that with a bow and arrow. Don't get me wrong, like you get, ex you can get extremely quick kills with a bow and arrow, as I've shown in some of my buffalo videos, the toughest animals in Australia. All right, I'm gonna go back, get my pack, because it's two or 300 meters away. And then we'll have a look at this guy, see how bad he stinks. All right guys, how good is this? Lovely Victorian billy goat. He's no monster by any means, but just an awesome looking critter. And I'm, I'm so stoked to be able to hunt these guys. As far as I'm aware, they're pretty, pretty hard to come by down in Victoria. But luckily I, I grew up down here and have quite a lot of uh, properties I have access to, which is very handy. Super under the under the pressure with um, time down here. I only have I only had two and a half days, and today's my second full day. I, I can hunt again in the morning, but yeah, I, I'm wrapped to get one of these guys on the ground. Like I mentioned earlier, this guy come unstuck when when he separated himself from the rest of the mob, and I saw that opportunity, and yeah, it all it all worked out exactly how exactly how I planned. He's got an absolutely Beautiful coat on him, really nice and thick. Getting ready for winter and God, he stinks so, but I'm gonna take the back legs and back straps off this guy. Had a, have had a few people ask me since I got back down here. If I get any meat, that they'd, uh, they'd really appreciate some, so yeah. Give some people some goat meat and um, I'm sure they'll enjoy it. He's not super old, so even though he's a billy, I'm sure the meat will be quite nice. I'm not going to show the uh, butchering in this video. I've uh, become aware that YouTube doesn't really like um, butchering being shown in the videos, but if you guys want to see a video where I break down on exactly how to field dress an animal, uh, just leave it in the comments. Just let me know and I'll make a specific, I'll make a specific video and I'll go out and I'll I'll kill a, a young buffalo probably, and um, I'll show you guys exactly how to how I field dress it, and then the process at home, aging the meat and then butchering it properly a couple of weeks later, and I'll show that whole process if you guys are interested, but just let me know in the comments. Alrighty, I'm gonna get to work on that, and then 
yeah, got a few hours left in the day. I think I'm gonna shoot over to another property, which is about an hour away, and hunt some fallow deer this afternoon, hopefully. So, yeah, I better get cracking with this. Guys, I really don't have enough time to be having my hunts ruined by bloody horses. I don't know where they came from. And they all just, as soon as they saw me, they just bolted up to me. I thought they were gonna trample me. Oh, so annoying. And obviously, the amount of racket they've caused, everything is gone now. That's pretty much ruined the Savo's hunt. And they're just standing there. It's like they're mocking me.